Don't check the 15, this 16. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. I'm going to read this again. I tell you the truth, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now the usage of the word connects the sender with the person who was sent. So there's two things here, there's two factors. There's a person who is a sender, and then there is a person who has been sent. Okay. Now in the Hebrew, the rabbis applied the term shalach, meaning to send away. To send away, I'll spell it for you, S-H-A, L A C H. That's what it sounds like. To send away. So the, to the person who was commissioned, sent away. The person was sent away. To the person who was commissioned by God and authorized by God. This is very important to get this now. In knowing a true apostle. He was sent away. He was commissioned. He was authorized by God. Not by man, but by God. Isaiah the prophet, he was therefore a sent one because he had been sent away. By who? By God. He was sent. He was a sent one. Isaiah 6 verse 8, the authorized representation of God. He was authorized by God for a task. He was sent by God. The sender being the one who sent him. We call that, we've got it. He was sent by God. He didn't turn up an 18 year old. Say, okay, I want to preach now, so I'm going to get a, a small congregation going of three or four people. I'm going to be their apostle, and they're going to treat me as such. Is he an apostle at 18 years of age because he wanted a congregation? What's the answer to that? No. Hey, well, first of all, was he sent away? By God? Was he commissioned by God? Was he authorized by God? Or because he wanted a congregation? So he's going to call himself a title. Also, yeah. too, the thing is they weren't just recognized by God alone, they were recognized by the other apostles. Yeah. You know, they prayed, they fasted, and they watched their ministry. And, you know, we you know we see that. They were not just men that were self-appointed. They were men without a doubt that their gift was evident in their life. The character was evident in their life. And uh, all of them, they prayed and fasted and all would agree that without a doubt. Look at Saul of Tarsus. You know, how long was it? Saul with Ananias on the road to Damascus and as to Acts chapter 9. We all know the story. Saul, you know, Met the Lord on the road to Damascus. You know, and the Lord said to him, Why do you persecute me, Saul? And the Lord, you know, Saul said, Saul said, Lord, Lord, who are you? I am Jesus. So then Saul had a revelation, a true Jesus encounter with the Lord and Savior on the road to Damascus. And the Lord said to him, Why do you persecute me, Saul? Saul was persecuting the Lord Jesus. Now, one of the true traits of an apostle is he has to have the evidence of a true Christ encounter. There has to be the evidence of that in his life. We see that with Saul. But yet the Lord touched Saul's eyes and he was blinded. And he couldn't see. We all know. But yet the Lord God spoke to a servant named Ananias 
And Ananias was fearful. He said, I've heard terrible reports about the Saul of Tarsus. He's came here with the authority of the high priest in Jerusalem, and he's going to come here and kill all of us followers of the way, followers of Christ. But the Lord said, go to the Ananias, and I will teach him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. Hear me now, the evidence of an apostle is he's a man that has suffered for Christ. But in the midst of his suffering, he also has been delivered by Christ by signs and wonders. Not just by miracles. There's a difference between signs and wonders and miracles. They're two different things. Guys say, because I lay hands on the sick and the healed, then that means that I'm an apostle. No, you're not. That just means you have a gift of healing or a gift of miracles. But the apostle, he will have the evidence of signs and wonders accompanying him and following him. Without a doubt. You know, when he's put on death row in jails where he can't get out, God will cause an earthquake and shake the building and he will be free and run. He will send angels and angels will come and lead him out of the place. And supernatural things that are unexplainable. The evidence of apostleship has to carry these accounts and they have to be documented, not just a story. They have to be founded and backed upon. Paul, when Ananias came to Paul and touched him, God opened his eyes and he could see. Now we know Paul had poor eyesight and that was a thorn in his flesh. But in saying that, Anna did Saul, who God called Paul and called him to be one of the greatest apostles of all times, and Paul basically wrote and interpreted most of the New Testament and built most of the New Testament church, amen? This great apostle had to prove himself even after he met with the Lord on the road to Damascus. Saul, now Paul, walked a road for 14 years with Ananias and preached the gospel fearlessly to the Jews, to the Gentiles. In 14 years, he was molded in his character, the word test, the time test, the faith test. He went through all of those things. This Pharisee of Pharisees, the most learned Pharisee of his day, a brilliant minded theologian of theologians, Paul. He was that profound among all the Pharisees in his knowledge and his stature. God humbled him. God took everything from him. You know, and you, and you need to understand the culture of a Pharisee and who he was in the community. He, he lost everything. He was humble. He had nothing. But Paul was broken. But for 14 years, God put him through the time test, the word test, molded him, matured him, brought him into this. And after 14 years, and the apostles in Jerusalem heard of Paul, and they knew what he was doing, and they watched him. They heard the reports of salvation. They heard the reports of the way he taught the word correctly and was converting thousands of people. The churches he was involved in planting, they watched, they saw what he was doing, and they watched carefully, and they judged him. Only after 14 years of the dealings of God did then the apostles in Jerusalem invite him up to Jerusalem to meet with him. And only when, after 14 years, when they reviewed everything about his ministry, his character, his integrity, when they had spoken to many men all over the country that were trustworthy about this man's fall, only then did they say, Paul, we recognize God has called you as an apostle. Without a doubt, there is the evidence of that within you in maturity. 14 years. 
to you this guy's thing. And now the Lord's told me I'm an apostle, so now you proclaim your apostle. Excuse me. And let me say this to you. The true, true apostle, the true prophet, they're born with it. It's something that they're born with from day one. It's not something they just get when they get saved and the Holy Spirit comes upon them. They're born, it's in their DNA. God already places his hand in their mother's womb that's in them before they even born. They don't need to be taught. Look at Jesus. When Jesus went missing, they knew where to find him. Joseph and Mary, they knew where to find Jesus. He was in the synagogue. Little Jesus, that's where he was. If he wasn't with his mother and his father, he was in the synagogue. See, it's God given. It's born within them for a purpose and a task. They can do nothing else. But understand, they are men full of grace and truth, full of integrity. And they're men that have walked the road and have been proven with character over many years. And the evidence of signs and wonders continues. It doesn't just happen once. It's without a doubt ongoing in their life. You know, uh, some of the apostles that I served under, they were, the reports are documented. These men were born with the gift. Their parents didn't know what to do. At the age, as soon as they could walk, they could even start walking. They would get up and touch somebody. And people in wheelchairs, that baby would just touch them, and that person would stand up immediately and run. They never, not even saved. You know, and that's the one I'm talking about. They, the, the evidence was God was with them. They're born with it. It's not just something you receive because you got born again and the Holy Spirit comes upon me now I'm an apostle. Ah, it's, a, it's, it's something that is unique and given by God and you're born with it.